You're spinning a web here. Dude, Keith Santos was in the Waymo with me. We're doing the Waymo thing, and we took him through Go to Gay Park, and he had no idea we had buffaloes in Go to Gay Park. He was blown away. He got out the car. It's like, well, I didn't know this existed. I didn't know this. See, you know, he's from Brazil. So Keith Santos, very interesting guy. I like Keith Santos. Very good personality. You should get him on a roast. Wow, dude. Key Santos, very interesting, man. Very good story. Very good story. Well, if they bought him out, we'll have anyone we want from the team on the roast at some point. <laughs> Quentin Post on the roast? I do like that. The Morning Post? The Morning Post. How like about, have you guys been listening to the, our guy, Kevin Dana? Oh, he's been great. Been amazing. I met him last week. There you go. In person. Oh. Yeah. Talk about that. You got the great. Kevin I got Dana. to meet uh, the great saintly one. Yeah, Bonte Hill hooked it up. California Classic Joe Shasky. We missed you there. Guru Benny, it was a great time. We, Gary St. Jean, the great R.C. Davis. Well, when Bronny was out, you know. I mean. Well, we got to see him, though. We were close. I almost I almost said Bronny. You were know. you taller than him? I was, I was, actually, I was wearing flip-flops, and he was only like an inch or two taller than me. Yeah, Spinotti wore flip-flops <laughs> with no that. socks to a basketball game. I did. did you? Yeah. We, such a SoCal move. Was, I know. Thank you. Yeah. Like, it, was just, <laughs> it was just big dad, too. Like, you'll, like, you'll re, like, I wasn't trying to impress anyone there. Well, I didn't know I was going to be courtside, by the way. And then, and then Bonte, like, we just got to the meander that away. Cool. And say, it was really cool. It was a cool that experience cool. for Saw Dr. Nero Pondia. Yeah, yeah, Pondia was there. Yeah. I saw Pondia, like, three days prior to that in Emeryville, hanging out at Bay Street, too. Oh. Pondia, Mr. Worldwide, by the yeah, way. Had man. a son. Met a son for the first time. Pondia, concerned by Steph playing in the Olympics, by the way. He did say that. He does not like that he's a little older playing in the Olympics. He's a little concerned about his workload hanging into yeah, the regular season. stop being so concerned. He's a doctor. Oh that's what they're doing. Come this on. Guy, this guy can get hurt running, you know, sprints in practice. This guy can strain a hammy running on a curl for a three-point shot. When he shot. broke his hand, it was the most random play. Right. The guy, like, collapsed Aaron on Baines. it. Yeah, it was, it was just such Whoa. a random play. Remember when he hurt his tailbone? It was a random play. Like, to your well, point, it can happen anytime. Well, you know, I will say a warrior official after the case says, you know, this may not be the worst thing in the world for us. Which one? <laughs> Steph Curry breaking his head that oh, season. Oh, well, that, yeah. Because they were like, we're basically not going anywhere. We get a high pick. We get Clay back, and we know how it worked out. Clay got hurt. You take Wiseman. The rest is history. Wiseman's now on his third team with the Indiana Pacers. Indiana Pacers. So uh, what about the what about a doc on the rise of De La Salle football? Not bad. Not bad at all. Need a doc on TV, Bonte, or Radio Bonte. That'd be an interesting documentary. Did you guys ever see, sorry, on the Dale South thing, did you ever see the, the When the Game Stands Tall movie that came out I about did. 10 years ago? I, I watched ago? that on the play. No, I haven't. Yeah. I watched that on the play. It's very interesting. It was good. Like, I'm watching, because I read the book too, and it was just like, the movie wasn't really true to the book, but it was like true to kind of like what that football program kind of like stood for and represented. It was it, They did a good job on that one. Yeah, they did. They did. They did. Um, a documentary on the morning roast. Oh, how it formed. By the way, shout out Kate Scott. If you guys don't know this, Roasters. Kate Scott, one of the broadcasters for the new Madden game. You talk about making a great career move, leaving us in the dust, calling Sixers games. I have to play Madden, and our girl Kate Scott's going to be in the new Madden. She either got the greatest agent in the world, but damn, Kate, she, you talk about a great career decision. A great career decision. She made the best decision. Born and grown. Let me get the hell out of here. <laughs> Two years later, she's on a new bat. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, let's hear from Big Oliver, Sidey Guru, on Pod's aggression in Team USA. Let's talk some Team USA, Shasky. Cat got to talk. This is the first time you meet I haven't talked in 30 seconds. I can't believe it. Well, I'll tell you with Pods, man, it's going to be his shots. It's not going to be the passes because that guy's putting the rock up <laughs> like in these oh. scrimmages. He, he's getting his shots <laughs> up, you know, and he was uh, he was playing really competitively against Steph at times, one on one heads up. I think Steph might have even said he's the most competitive guy he's ever seen, uh, which is you know quite the compliment coming from uh, an all time great. Uh, but it was just a very aggressive uh, Pods throughout the scrimmages that we watched. And B, you know, unfortunately hit pods in the face and kind of knocked him out of a scrimmage for a little bit. So he's out there, you know, trying to play like an MVP, trying to assert himself in the middle. That's a that's a tough thing to sign yeah. up for during the summer. So uh, give that guy some brownie points. So you want to hear pods? Here's listen to pods. Whatever court I step onto, whether it's this court or, you know, Wednesday at the Cali Classic, I think, you know, I belong. I can compete with anybody. And I think that's just the mindset you got to have as a, you know, up and coming guy. Show the older guys that you can do it. Um, but it's just, you know, the confidence piece that everybody knows I have. Brandon Pajemski. There's a lot going on with Pajemski this summer. 
This is a lot. You know, like, again, I, I saw uh, Anthony Slater quote about Melton being in the starting lineup. Yeah. Uh, many people have suggested it's Pajemski that the Warriors have basically said that to Clay Thompson. I don't know what they told him. I'm not really sure. Um, are we are we selling Pajemski short? Because it seems like everybody's really high on Pajemski, and maybe I'm just a little more reluctant to see what everyone else sees or to, to say out loud. I think he's a really good player. I, I don't know exactly what position he is. Now, you, oh, Steph didn't really have a position. Then Steph's an outlier, so let's right. throw him to the side and comparing anyone to Steph, it's not fair. But, like, I see him as a backup point guard, at least currently. Maybe he could be a starting point guard. There are a lot of dynamic starting point guards uh, in the NBA right now. The defensive side of the ball, I'd like to see what it looks like next year. The shot, I'd like to see what it looks like next year. You know, is he more of a catch-and-shoot guy? Can he be better off the dribble as a shooter? We know he can set teammates up. Can he finish a little? He had that little runner that he liked, you know, right. a little floater. Um, it does feel like the summer of pods, and I don't know what to make of it. He's a combo guard, right? He's going to get the offense in the right spot. He's going to keep the ball moving. Uh, excuse me, keep the ball moving. Um, what he's got to do, I think the improvement for him, and I think he knows this. He went 4-13 last night in the Cali Classic. I'm not going to go crazy over that. 4-13 in the Cali Classic, and he was 1-6 from the three-point line. But if he wants to take that leap, because he's going to do a little bit of everything, right? 10-5-5, he's going to rebound well for his position. He's going to be in the right spot. Take care of the basketball. We get it. He was he had the best plus minus for a lot of plus minus geeks. That means a lot. The best plus minus on the team doesn't mean he's the best player on the team, but it is indicative of when he's on the floor. More good things happen than bad things. The next step for him, he's got to hit jump shots outside. He's got and he knows that. I think he knows that, and he's got to be a better scorer. Hell, he even talked about it. Just exploring different areas where I can score a lot of. Shots that I passed up last year that'll be going up this year, um, but I think it's something the team needs, uh, and for me to get where I want to go to, both from a team's perspective and an individual perspective, um, I think scoring is, you know, you need to take that jump. All good players can score the ball at all three levels, so for me, just, you know, finding different ways to score. I think in camp, um, I was a little bit passive, just just because we have so much talent around us, and I think it's just natural for me. Uh, but I think, you know, just with our team perspective from the Warriors, I think just being a little bit more aggressive. Did he touch on starting versus coming off the bench? That's always a big deal with the fans, and I always think it's finishing the game. If we learned anything on last mm -hmm. year's Warriors, it was finishing, not starting. Mm -hmm. But again, we're all worried about who starts in the first five minutes of the game. Well, here's what Pod said about that. I definitely feel more comfortable on the ball, and I know Steph feels comfortable off the ball. So if we end up starting together, um, which is a possibility, uh, that'd be cool. But for me, it's just just playing. I mean, it doesn't matter if I start, come off the bench. I just want to be out there when the game's on the line. So, you know, it's definitely a possibility, but I definitely got to earn it. Uh, it just doesn't come easy. We have a lot of veteran guys now that we picked up. So for me, just going in there every day, showing Steve and the, and the staff that I deserve it and I earn it, and just kind of go from there. So, Pods acknowledging that, hey, I need to be a better scorer. I've got to take shots. I've got to hit shots. He's got to hit shots. I think he's a baller. I think he's going to be, he does all the little things for you. But his next step is we talk about Kaminga and Moody and TJD and his youth movement and what the Warriors may do. If Pods is on this roster, there's no doubt the leap I want to see from him is becoming more of a natural scorer, more of a natural jump shot shooter, more of a natural three-point shooter. He's got to get that shot cleaned up. And that's the next evolution for his game, in my opinion. And he said, said it right there Monday afternoon in Las Vegas. So I'm just looking at, like, he, he plays the guard position. And I'm not sure right. if he's shooting guard, point it's guard, combo, combo guard. guard. I'm not sure how to define he him. He likes the ball at his head, so the point guard. Okay, okay. So I just I just want to start writing off some names here, okay? And, and some of these guys aren't true point guards, but the ball's in their hands a lot for their team in terms of the offensive uh, facility. And I'm not going to put SGA as a point guard. To me, he's a shooting guard, but I could see where people would think he is. I think Jalen's more their point guard. Mm, SGA has the ball in his hands a lot. I know, but would you like, classify Jaylen, him as a point guard? I would say he's a combo guard. He's a guard. He's so a guard like D-Wade? Because like he, he could play point and two guards. So if I put yeah, him in... Then like Dwayne Wade. Like I think about Dwayne Wade. He could play point if you want, but he's a two guard. But he could play point and initiate offense if you wanted to. 
Okay, like so. Then do you put like a Cade Cunningham in that same category? He's a guard. He's a guy who can initiate offense. Going to have the ball of the same. Right, so, so, so I'm, right, I'll know. put him over. That's fine. So we got SGA, Luca, Cade Cunningham, mm-hmm. Derek White. I consider to be more of a, a point guard. Would, would you agree? Uh, combo guard. I think guards. I think Pods and Derek yeah. White are actually a, very similar. I think right. Derek White's a little longer. Well, I think he's a better defender. Well, just think about that offense, though. Who's who has the ball in their hands all the time? It's either Tatum, Brown, Drew Holiday. It, it feels very uh, different than a Warrior offense because right. it's more ISO heavy. So, right. so okay. Well, I guess where I'm going at with this, like, are we just selling the guy short? Can he be one of these upper echelon type of players? Because I, I, I look at someone like Scoot Henderson well, in, in Portland. You're going to the top here. You're, you're talking about SGA. You're talking about all NBA players. I don't need pause to make that leap to all NBA coming from rookie team in the second year. I seen him get better, get better. And how do you get better? Improve your jumper. Improve your ball handling, improve your defense, the way you move defensively, and then become a winning player. I need you to become a winning player first before we start talking about, hey, could Pajitsky be an all NBA player? Well, That's really hard. There's only 15 spots in the I, league. I don't even, I, I didn't mean all NBA. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, just, gotcha. I'm just looking around the league and I'm saying to myself, like, part of what makes, like, these guys, like, when you say right. Luca, so I'm like, right. top five player in the league. Exactly. You, you know, like, that's why I brought up a Scoot Henderson. Like, this is a lower tier guy. I don't know really what to make a Scoot Henderson. Well, natural point. He's a rookie. He's got to work on his shot. He's got to work on his clock. He's got to work. Like, on his who shot. do you like better right now? You like Pods or you like Scoot? Well, Scoot just played one year. You saw the. You saw the. Scoot's going to be a good player. Scoot's going to be a really good player. There's some things you just can't teach. That speed, that strength, that physicality and that, that he plays with. And, 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 and look, they're a rebuilding team, but he's got something to work with there. Pods fits this team right now with all the motion offense and the ball movement. Remember, the Warriors run a different system. So, um, look, I, I just need Pods to be better. He's got to make a leap for the team. And he had a, I, I, when I say better, it's not like he had a terrible season a season ago. He made all rookie first team. But that's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? He's playing on he's, the USA. He's playing whatever, select team. The, select yeah, team. The select he, he's team. working out. He's getting work or whatnot. So, look, for Pods, it's just building off of last season, improving your jump shot. Getting better as a score, not getting lost when you get t- too deep in the paint, and then you're looking around trying to pass it around. I heard him talking about his hook shot, you know, working on his hook shot or whatnot. I would rather him not shoot the hook shot, but it is what it is. Just be better, be patient with him, but let him become better. Remember, numero uno on this team is Stephen Curry. All right, who your second best player is, who knows? But Pots, can you be a winning player? And in today's NBA, where we're going positional is basketball. Like, there's no real three, fours, twos, ones. It's combinations. Can you be a two-way player? Can you be a two-way player? That's the NBA now. There's no now. Like, Steph Curry, is he a point guard, shooting guard? He's a hell of a player. You know what I'm saying? You can, we could can argue with two or blue in the face. There's so many combo guards in the game where different guys can handle the ball and bring the ball up the floor and initiate offense. Pods is one of those guys who can initiate offense, but also just kind of direct the offense from not even having the basketball like Chris Paul did last season. So... Let's not get caught up in whether or not he's a true point guard, a true two guard, a combo guard, or whatnot. He's a baller, and the guy can play on winning teams. Brandon Pajitski, I saw him make a lot of winning plays last season. So, but that next improvement for him, if the Warriors want to get to where they want to get to, he's got to improve that jumper. That's it for me. That's number one. Improve that three point shot because teams are going to sag off him, and they're going to say, "Beat us with the three. I just think he's more polarizing than than we want to admit because I think that the the range of what he could be is all over the place. Some people think that he could I mean, I see some people saying he could morph into some version, some version of like, oh, he could be a Jalen Brunson. Like to get to where Jalen Brunson is where he's controlling that entire team, Jeez. that took a long time. Jeez, who's saying that? Jalen Brunson? Well, but I think at one point. You know, Jalen Brunson was more of a sixth man than he was a, yeah. a starter, and then we didn't know he could take over an entire team. Like, but that's a, he's also significantly older and more seasoned than where Pajemski's at. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, it's yeah, all over I the map. You. Is he a backup? Is he a starter? I mean, we don't even know right now. Like, we've talked a lot about Kaminga. I just think that there's a whole Pajemski question. Like, we all like him. Yeah. I just don't know if I ever see him being the second or third best player on this team, and they're a top four, top five team. But that's yeah. also not fair because he's yeah. only twenty. He, he's in a second year. I'm not. If he's your second best player right now on this team, then you may struggle a lot. You may struggle a bit. But can he be a winning player? Does he fit in? I think he fits in. I think he fits in. Now, Moody, I saw Moody. 